You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. As some of you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you with a Let's Play episode of Psychic Connections: Aiden's Path. So, the last place we left off is we had just arrived at the camp after uh, Aiden. I mean, after uh, Jude and Quinn had gotten out of the vehicle because uh, Jude was in, a, in a, a, a bit of a bad mood, you know, just, uh, just, a, just a little bit ticked off, just a tad angry or upset <laughs> that uh, we had tricked him into coming on this trip to make up with Aiden. So this is a little bit of a different route than I've taken before. I've always uh, kind of gone after them. This time I decided to stick with, uh, with Aiden and the gang. So, let's see what happens, shall we? Hope you guys enjoyed the video. And, oh, one second. Let me set the timer, and off we go. <clears throat> Alright. Sorry, just a bit heavier than I expected. Picking the bag up off the ground, I sling it over my shoulder next to my backpack. With a grunt here and a huff there, I pull my weight and follow Elliot up a small trail to our campsite. Continuing to our spot, I find, these, I find these three tents pitched around an empty fire pit and a few bags strewn about the ground. You're here! Zoe quickly runs into me, pulling me into a tight hug. Between the heavy bags and her bone-crushing embrace, I might very well succumb to gravity and collapse on the spot. Where are the other two? We had a bit of a hiccup, uh, so they're walking the rest of the way while the big one cools his head. Gotcha. Well, hopefully seeing Aiden in his outfit will cheer him up. Outfit? Yeah, hang on. Aiden! Quickly running out of one of the tents is a familiar dashing wolf, donning a less than dashing set of clothes. It's like one of those old scout uniforms. Surely he must realize how ridiculous it looks. Ah, Mason, Elliot, glad the two of you could make it. Is Quinn not with you? No, he, uh, wanted to take a walk. That doesn't sound like him. Well, no matter. You can all set your things over here and there. Aiden, here and Aiden stops his sentence short as he begins scanning the bags in our hands. Why do you have four bags? Alright, let's just skip ahead. Yes, Jude is here. We just want you two to talk, okay? I can't believe this. Once again, you try turning something serious into some ridiculous charade. We simply do not get along, and that is okay. You cannot force friendship. We're not asking for friendship, Aiden. We're asking for you two to be more civil with one another. You've known each other for two years, and it seems like it's always spat after spat. <laughs> this is ridiculous. We have nothing in common. I've tried, really. I have, but we're too different. Anytime I even approach him, I can feel his anger, and that just makes me feel just as enraged. I just... I need a minute. Aiden drops some sticks next to the fire pit and proceeds to walk a short distance away from the campsite. Drawn to the sound of a shifting bush, my eyes catch a large bull following the wolf, though his eyes briefly look back at all of us. That must be Jericho, the bodyguard I've heard so much about. I pictured a big guy, but somehow he's even bigger than I imagined. <sighs> Jeez, Aiden wasn't kidding about the bodyguard. Jericho? Yeah, he used to be smaller. But then again, we were all, we all were when we met. So, wait, does he know about us? How we're all... Psychics? Yeah, Jericho's a psychic too. Seriously? Yeah, he's a telepath. More specifically, he can read thoughts. It's why Aiden chosen to be his bodyguard. He can usually tell if someone is going to do harm well before they act on it. Wait, then why isn't Jericho part of the whole group? He doesn't need it. What do you mean? This seems like a conversation for a little later, don't you think? Right. Mason, I'll explain in a bit. Right now, we need to get you two settled in. Get the boys all back here and calm everyone down. Of course. Uh, it just feels like I'm a bit I'm a bit to have a ton of my questions answered, but I suppose I can hang in suspense a little while longer. Well, tell you what. Help Elliot unpack everyone's stuff or help Aiden get his head on straight, then we'll sneak over to the side for a chat. She seems a little more on edge than usual. This trip likely isn't going the way she'd hoped. I want to ask her if she's okay, but I should just wait and do what she asked. Let's save it right here. Choice time. 
course we're gonna go talk to Aiden. Leaving Zoe to help Aiden unpack, I start heading towards the lone wolf staring out at the empty sky. The hair continues lightly flowing in the wind. I'd almost think he looked majestic like this if not for his ridiculous clothes. Hey. Can I help you? No, but hopefully I can help you. Aiden scoffs at this, shaking his head and pacing back and forth before turning towards me. How exactly were you expecting to help me? I'm stuck in the middle of nowhere with someone who can't stand me. You could always leave. No. I came out here to get pictures for the assignment. Besides, if I left, I'd never hear the end of it. No. I'll have to confront this directly. Aiden begins pacing again, and I feel a slight itch on the back of my neck. Turning around, I find Jericho standing near a tree, his eyes alert, as if studying me. Is he gonna keep staring at me? Jerry, knock it off. You're causing him discomfort. The large bovine begins moving away from the tree line and towards Aiden and me. Yes, sir. Really? Calling me sir? I told you when we're not at work, just call me Aiden. But this is my work. Okay, yes, but this is more leisure than business at this point. Besides, it's not as if my father would... Oh, you ass. Aiden punches Jarek on the shoulder, who doesn't even slightly budge. I wondered when you'd catch on. Well, a formal introduction. Jericho, this is Mason. Mason, this is my guardian of sorts, Jericho. Interesting. So this is the Mason I've been hearing about. Jericho takes a step forward and seemingly starts sizing me up, looking up and down in a seemingly exaggerated motion. I thought he'd be taller. Uh, nice to meet you too? Anyway, go take a walk, Jerry. I don't need you keeping watch right now. All right, boss, but if you need anything, just holler. The large bull takes another step towards me, glaring at me from above. I'm always just a shout away. Jericho then pulls out a pack of cigarettes and proceeds on his way, leaving the two of us alone. Sorry about him. He can be overprotective. Yeah. Not to mention that he can be absolutely terrifying. That dude looked like he was about to crush me with his thumb. So... Scary bodyguards aside, can I ask why you're wearing that? I point at Aiden's absurd outfit, hoping this will be a lighter conversation that might brighten his mood. If nothing else, it'll answer a question that I've had all day. It's proper camping attire. I did excessive research on the proper wear for camping and found this. It's the most practical garb, both light and sturdy, with high breathability and movement. Okay, but what about how it looks? Yes, I'm aware the scarf might be a bit much, but I'm actually rather fond of it. He has no idea how absurd that whole getup looks. He looks like he came out of a scout magazine from the 70s. That's not what I... Ah. Anyway, what's the plan with Jude, then? I don't know. I can just do what the others want, tuck my tail between my legs and apologize. But... But I'm not sorry. I tried to help Jude's mother get a job, so that Jude could have more freedom. He shouldn't feel obligated to take care of her just because she doesn't have her life together. I just thought if I'd done that, I'd be doing my part for this group. I help Elliot with his business, I help Quinn with school, and whenever he needs a replacement phone. Jude rejects anything I try to offer him. I don't know what he wants. Looking at Aiden with his ears folded back, it becomes clear that he really is just trying to help. Let me see if it's right here. Oh, nope, nope. music. He actually believes in trying to help others, just like Zoe keeps talking about, although I'm not sure what he gets out of it. Look, Mason, I appreciate you trying to mediate. I'll be fine. I just need to figure out how I'm going to handle this. If you don't mind, I think I need some time by myself. I'll, re excuse me. I'll rejoin you and the others when I'm ready. Of course, I'll give you some space. Aiden turns back to the sky, looking towards the lowering sun. I find myself resisting an urge to give him a hug and smack him on the back of the head at the same time. Instead, I reach the conclusion that it's better to just give him some space like he wants. Walking back into the camp, I'm greeted by Zoe and Elliot, who have finished setting things up. Looking over, I can see Jude and Quinn have also found their way back in. Jude is sitting against a tree still brooding, while Quinn sits next to him chattering away. 
Hey, Mason, how's he holding up? It's a bit tough to say, but I think he'll come around. I'm saying this to her, but really, I don't know Aiden well enough to say that with certainty. I suppose it's more of an optimistic hope than anything else. Great! Then if you've got a few minutes, we should go and have a quick chat. Yeah? I need to stretch my legs a bit, and I feel like you've got some questions for me that have been burning in your pocket. Zoe grabs my arm and begins pulling me to the side. She did say we talk later. I just didn't think it'd be so quickly. Following Zoe, we begin taking a short walk away from the camp. <sighs> Along the way, we pass by Jericho. He's still smoking a cigarette by Elliot's truck. I feel his eyes following us as we cross his path. I'm not sure why I feel so nervous around him. I know he works for Aiden, so he can't be all that bad. Something about how he looks at me, though, it leaves me feeling a bit unnerved. Shaking him from my thoughts, I turn my attention towards Zoe. So, you wanted to talk? Yeah, I did. I just need to get my thoughts together first. So, you probably have quite a few questions, so I guess I should just start from the beginning. I started this group to help others with their psychic abilities. If nothing else, give them a chance to talk to others like them. For some people, like Jericho, it's like turning on and off a light switch. You just focus really hard and it happens. People like that tend to not really need an extensive support group because they can blend in seamlessly with others. In other cases, like Quinn's, it just happens without warning, which can be dangerous both to others and themselves. Even if I can't help them find a way to control their abilities better, I want to help them live with them, accept them, embrace them. This club was supposed to help, yet it's been two years and I've barely made any real progress. Zoe lets out a deep sigh. She stops, wa she stops walking for a moment and takes, the, and takes the tugging lightly on her bangs. I have to confess something, Mason. I have no idea what the hell I'm doing. I don't know how to help them grow anymore, and with the time running out before I graduate, I just worry I might end up leaving them worse off than when I found them. What made you decide to do all this in the first place? It's the family business. My father is one of the heads of a large psychic syndicate, functioning to help keep functioning to help keep psychics safe as well as out of public attention. How many of us are there? Easily thousands. It's through our organization that we maintain secrecy. Is it like a government-run organization, or are we talking about a literal secret society? <sighs> I'm being serious. So am I. I just want to make sure I've got all this straight. Hey, don't really know. My dad doesn't exactly share a lot of the finite details with me. I can't imagine we've avoided government detection, but it's not like we've ever. But it's not like I've ever seen my dad talking to federal agents or anything. This is a lot of information to digest. I'm still trying to wrap my head around this. Let me save it right here. So, basically, psychics have a secret society, and your dad works for them, and eventually, you will too. That's the gist. So where do I come in? Ooh, excuse me. I'm sorry if I'm still a little doubtful, but I really don't think I'm psychic. It's okay if you don't believe me, but my eyes have never been wrong before. Everyone keeps saying Zoe's never been wrong, but I still don't exactly understand what her abilities even entail. So... what, do you have the psychic equivalent of Gadar or something? Heh, <laughs> not quite. You ever hear the phrase, the eyes are the windows to the soul? Well, in my case, I take that quite literally. There isn't really a name for it, but I've been calling it optic psychometry. I can look someone in the eyes and know everything about them. Where they're from, what kind of person they are, the works. Seriously? That's crazy! So you already know everything about me? Nope. I don't really know anything about you, barring the vibe I get from you. For whatever reason, I can't seem to read people with minds at an elevated level. Wait, but it seemed like you knew I was psychic already when you decided to bust into my dorm room. That's because I did. You probably don't remember it since you were exhausted, but I was the one who gave you your room key. Thinking back, those last few hours of orientation are a bit of a blur. It's possible she's telling the truth. It was a really long flight, so I doubt anyone could blame me for being as tired as I was. I'll do what I can to help you figure out what your ability is, but I also need your help too. What do you mean? Well, whatever your ability is, it's clearly not affecting you negatively, so to be honest, you probably don't need to be part of this group. But, 
I need your help. I feel like I've gotten soft on them, so I've become blind to some of their issues. She's hoping I'll have a fresh perspective. It makes sense. It can be easy to lose sight of things when you've been working at something for too long. How would you expect me to help? Honestly, I just need you to be able to fill in whenever I can. There's four of them, and problems arise more often than you'd think. If you could be the go-to guy and be there for one of them, it'd make it easier for me to support the others. That seems like a tall order when you put it that way. It's really not. Just be a friend, talk to them, listen to them, and help them when you can see they need it. That's it? All she wants me to do is spend time with them? Zoe looks at me with an expression I can't place. Is she actually nervous that I won't want to be friends with them because I don't need to? Maybe I'm a weirdo. Maybe I should be running to the hills because of how this whole group seems to function. At this point, though, I can't see myself walking away. I'm invested, and if just being here is helpful, then I can't see the harm in that. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's a weird way to ask me to be friends, but everything you said made sense. It's a bit of a stretch to wrap my head around a secret psychic society, but beyond that, I think I'm good. No, oh, and you're dead. Zoe's eyes begin to water, and she, be, and she pulls me into a tight hug. I know she just said she had a psychic vision or whatever, but I still think she might have super strength. My bones are just a quick squeeze away from popping out of place. Z Zoe, I... I can't breathe! Don't be melodramatic. I'm not about to kill you with a hug. She releases me from her vice grip, and the air once again flows freely, in freely into my lungs. Looking at the sky above us, it seems the sun has started setting into the horizon. Oh, that's... We should get back before the others start to wonder where I, where we went. Are you ready? Are you ready to head back? Definitely. Walking back to camp, I feel a tension in my shoulders falling away that I didn't even realize was there. I feel as though I understand Zoe and the others better than I did before. Though thinking about all of them, there's a strange thumping I feel in my chest. Returning to the camp, we're met with a rather interesting sight. Aiden is hunched over the fire pit, rubbing two sticks together. I'm telling you, this is the recommended method, and it conserves our resources. It takes three seconds to light a fire with a lighter, Aiden. You're not exactly saving anyone resources. Just give me a minute and let me focus. I can do this. You've been at it for almost an hour, half an hour. We need to cook some food. Aiden, cool it with the sticks, all right? We need to set up the cameras anyway. But... No buts! Aren't you the one saying we have a job to do, and shouldn't that job be our number one priority? Aiden pouts in defiance, but his shoulders go slack in a clear display of defeat. He drops the sticks into the pit and moves into a tent. Aelit quickly swoops down to the fire pit and starts a small blaze in a matter of seconds with his lighter. Hey Aiden, while you're in there, can I borrow one of your portable chargers from my phone? It's almost dead. How is your phone almost dead? I was browsing the internet looking for some good memes. You expect me to waste a charge on your hunt for humorous media? I don't expect it, but I'm hoping for it. I suppose I can turn my phone off while I sleep and lend you one. Just know that I'm not handing out anymore. Quinn squeals with joy, kicking his heels into a little stump chair he's secured for himself. Aiden exits his tent with a charger, hands it to Quinn, and then moves away from the growing fire to place his cameras. So what's for grub tonight, Elliot? I'm thinking of frying up some sausages. I brought a couple pans to cook dinner tonight and tomorrow. What are we supposed to eat for breakfast and lunch? I'll be making a lot of sausages tonight, but I also brought breakfast bars for in the morning. That doesn't really count as breakfast. I guess it'll have to do, though. I'm not sure why, but I'm actually surprised to return to camp and find them all talking so civilly. With how tense things are with Aiden and Jude, I'd almost expect to return and find them engaged in fisticuffs. Time seems to fly by like this while Zoe and Aiden finish preparing the cameras, and Elliot fries up sausage after sausage for us all to consume. Seeing everyone like this, bathed in firelight and seemingly enjoying themselves, I feel a light tightness in my chest that I can't explain. Hey, Mason, come over here real quick. Zoe motions for me to follow her over to the clearing at the edge of a hill. She pats the ground, signaling for me to sit down, and I comply. In the distance, I can see trees in the beginning of the mountains. The sun had already dipped well below the horizon at this point, and the stars have started coming out. Look at all that. Leaning back into the cool grass, I look up at what she's seeing and take it all in. 
Above us is a brilliant sky, full of dazzling stars, each orb twinkling, pulsating, and fading into the cosmos. Hey, Rook, or the, anyone on the uh, Psychic Connections team, if you guys are watching this, um, I don't know if this is by, if you guys did this by design, I would actually make, uh, maybe make this scene a little more easier to, uh, a little easier to read, I guess, because it, it's, it's showing up quite blurry for me. I don't, if that's the intention, cool. But, I don't know, I think this scene, uh, just in my personal opinion, I think the scene might actually, uh, benefit from being clearer, so you can actually just gaze up and see the stars. Uh, it's, it's up to you guys. If this is your intention, that's fine. I just, I like stargazing, so... <laughs> Alrighty. Above us is a brilliant sky, full of dazzling stars, each orb twinkling, pulsating, and fading into the cosmos. It's remarkable to think how often simple sights such as these go unnoticed. I think I'd begun taking it for granted. Okay, Alarm Chan, I know, I know. <laughs> she can be a bit testy at times. Okay, guys, thank you so much for watching. We actually got a bit of new dialogue with Aiden today, and I am very happy about that. Let's see. Okay. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell to the next video. I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!